Welcome to this episode of Matt's Ranch Show. We're in Orlando, Florida, and I'm excited to be showing you one of the largest car collections I've ever seen. We're in an 800,000 square foot repurposed mall. The collection of cars numbers close to 2,000 vehicles. I won't be covering the entire place in this video, but I am planning on showing you as many cars as I can in the course of probably four different videos that I'll be uploading in the near future. This place had everything. From the cars of James Bond to the cars of Israel and Europe, from the Batmobiles to the actual car used in the first Mad Max movie, there's a Hollywood collection of cars here too, many of which were actually screen used vehicles. It's an absolutely amazing place. In this video I'll be concentrating on the collection of classic cars that were built in America. And there was a lot. So sit back, relax, and enjoy all of these cars in this episode of Matt's Rat Show. First off, I'll take us through the Americana Garage. Some really nice cars in here. Some nice Corvettes out front there. Start out with a really nice 1950 Oldsmobile Series 88 here. Followed by a 1954 Buick Skylark. This one is pretty rare too. It's one of only about 836 produced in 1954. An absolutely gorgeous car. Moving right along here we come to a 1957 Mercury Montclair. A pretty rare car too. There's only about 4,248 of these convertibles ever made and less than half of those still exist today. Coming up to a 1959 DeSoto Fire Sweep Sports. Absolutely beautiful car. Look at this thing. Here comes one of my favorites from this room a 1954 Packard Caribbean or Caribbean, however <laughs> you want to pronounce that. Apparently, this car won first place at a national show in 1980 and it's been kept in a climate controlled space ever since, so it's still looking really good. Caribbeans are considered one of Packard's most beautiful post-war cars that Packard ever built. And of course you guys will recognize this one, a 57 Chevy Bel Air. Absolutely perfect condition, at least from what I could see of it. Gorgeous. Here's a nice 59 Cadillac DeVille here. The pink one's a 58 Oldsmobile Super 88. The convertible there is a 1954 Plymouth Belvedere. Here's a 1949 Dodge Meadowbrook. Really nice condition. There's a sign that said some of the options from this car included an electric clock radio, a heater, turn signals, and white walls. I didn't realize that turn signals were an option at one point in time. <laughs> we're coming up on the back of a 1960 Dodge Polara and a 1960 Dodge Phoenix. We'll get a better look at these on the other side as well. Coming up on the Corvettes now though, a 54, a 59, and a 62. This one of course is the 54. You don't see too many of these out and about. Of course this is the first year they were produced in larger numbers. A white 62 here, beautiful. Last year for this model. And a blue 59 here, which apparently won the top flight award. Super nice Corvette. A 
coming up again on the back of this Dodge Phoenix here. Look at that. It's just incredible. The Dodge Polara beside it here. These were, of course, Dodge's answer to Ford's Galaxy 500 as well as the Chevy Impalas at the time. The 1960 Polaris were the, the first year for this make, you know, marking the end of the uh, DeSoto brand, I guess. Polaris were in production from about 1960 to 73, apparently. Ah, yes, back at the 1940 LaSalle sedan, made by GM's Cadillac division from 1927 through 1940. really cool car. I've never seen one of these before, so it was super cool to see it. I just love how original everything looks. Here's a cool one coming up. 1951 Kaiser Henry J. And here come not one, not two, but three Edsels. Of course, made by Ford, or 58 to 60. These are two 59s and an actual 1960 Edsel Ranger. This red one here is, of course, the 1960 Edsel. Look at that, it's pretty cool. I've never seen one of these before, actually. There was only 2,846 of these made. And apparently they're only made for 44 days of production. Like I said, I've never seen one of these before, so it's super cool to see. Look at that, so nice. Here's a 48 Fraser sedan, kind of a cool car. Love the split windshield. It's a nice post-war car here. Going by a 51 Studebaker Champion, of course, with that unique bullet nose. Love that. And a couple of uh, Jeep Willys. And finally, a 1941 Cadillac Series 61. A couple of guys singing some songs here. Leave a comment below if you know who they are super nice collection in this part. I believe everything in this video is going to be for sale too. They don't list any prices on their website. Um, they just say call for price, but you can find a, a bit more information on some of these vehicles um, at their website, which is just orlandoautomuseum.com. We're going to continue to our next location now. Okay, now we're going to head into the Chrysler Lounge. I really like the way they display the cars in this room. It felt like you were in a showroom from the 60s. Starting off with a beautiful 1960 Imperial. These cars always look like they're smiling to me. gray one here is a 59 Imperial. The black one here is a 
here's a 1962 Chrysler 300. Here's another 1960 Imperial. And this one here is a 1959. I love this green color. It reminds me of a car my grandma had. Kind of fun to see the model changes from 59 to 1960 here. Here's another 1960 Imperial. A lot of Imperials in this room. This has to be the most Imperials I've seen in one place at a time. It was actually pretty incredible to see this many displayed like this. Like I said, it just felt like a step back in time. one in the back there is a 60 Chrysler 300. I couldn't get back there to film it though. The green one next to it is a 1960 Chrysler Windsor. Here's another 59 Imperial. Kind of a gold color. Looks really nice. Here's a 57 Imperial. And right next to it is a 58 Imperial. That about wraps up this showroom. A lot of Imperials in this one. The only thing that would have made this room better is if they had a 1960s salesman dressed up as the time, like trying to sell you the, the new Imperials. <laughs> that would have been kind of fun. Okay, we're going to take a quick look inside the Main Street USA display of cars. We have a 49 Plymouth there with what looks like a siren on top. Here we have a 1949 Chrysler Town & Country and a 51 Chevy truck converted into some kind of a boat in Cuba actually. Here's a green 49 Plymouth Special Deluxe. That blue convertible in the corner is a 1950 Packard Super Deluxe Victoria next to a 48 Lincoln Continental. This blue one is a 53 Cadillac next to a 50 Plymouth Deluxe. This black one here is a 1947 Chevrolet Style Master. 49 Plymouth Special Deluxe. A 49 Willys Jeepster. And in the corner is a 49 DeSoto Custom. And this is one of my favorite cars in this room, a 1950 Mercury. Someday I would absolutely love to own one of these. And 
finally, a green 1950 DeSoto Custom. Man, that is nice. Okay, now we're moving into the quote-unquote muscle car display. Doing another fairly quick walkthrough on this one. Got a 5240 Conaline truck there with a 302 in the back. Kind of cool. Something you don't see every day. Nineteen seventy Volkswagen build there. Pretty nice fifty five over here. A couple of new cars in here as well. As we make our way to the back here, we have a seventy nine Camaro next to two seventy three Mach one Mustangs. And a 75 Pontiac Trans Am. A little 78 Corvette Stingray pace car here. Next to a car with what looks like some very uncomfortable seats. And finally coming back to the 55 here. Not a ton in the muscle cars, like I said, and no Mopars, unfortunately, but still cool to see. Ah, uh, yes, the Duesenbergs. <laughs> I don't know much about these vehicles, just that they were produced in the 20s and early 30s, I think. But then I think they started making them again in like the late 70s. Here's some kind of golf cart Duesenberg. This first one here is a 1980 Duesenberg II. This next one is a 1928 Duesenberg Model X. And finally, a 1980 Duesenberg Special. If you know more about these vehicles, just leave a comment below. We'd love to know, you know, more about their history and stuff. I think they're known for having the first inline eight, if I'm not mistaken. All right, we're headed into the Great Gatsby Lounge here. All cars featured from that era, mostly the 1930s. Here's a beautiful 1939 Cadillac Series 61 convertible. This green one here is a 36 Chrysler Airstream. A 38 Buick next to it. Back in the corner here is a 37 Chrysler Airflow. If you look closely there, you can see the words Chrysler Airflow on the front there. Pretty cool car. This blue one here is a 39 Oldsmobile 60 series. On the other side here, I move quickly past a 36 Dodge and a 30 Buick. Next to those, we have a really nice yellow 1940 Hupmobile Skylark. These are pretty rare. Here we 
have a 1937 Buick Roadmaster and a 1941 Cadillac here. An absolutely beautiful 1935 Cadillac Series 370D with a V12 in it. Cadillac only made the V12 in the 30s, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. Ending up here on the 1940 Graham Hollywood Model 109. You can tell by the sign there, only 686 of these made. Incredible to see one of these in this good a condition. Finally, we got the oldest car of the bunch here, 1929 Cadillac LaSalle. Okay, I'll take us for a quick look inside their 20s and 30s set up here, just a few cars. There's a 1923 Ford Model T Roadster. I do believe this car was used by the actual Laurel and Hardy. Kind of cool. Next to it here is a 1924 Packard Model 233. On the other side, those are a couple of horseless carriages. Next to those here is a Bonnie and Clyde death car. Apparently it was hard to identify the actual car that Bonnie and Clyde were killed in because there were so many replicas going around at the time. They were touring around to different shows and stuff. This here is one of those replicas, a 1929 Ford Model A. The actual car Bonnie and Clyde were killed in was a 1934 Ford Model 40B, four-door deluxe sedan, one of the fastest cars at the time. It's funny to me because of these replica cars, all the bullet holes are perfectly spaced out to cover the whole car as if they were trying to kill the car. In the actual Bonnie and Clyde death car, most of the bullet holes were concentrated, of course, at the driver's side door. Okay, moving right along, here's a red Ford Model T there in the middle and a 31 Chevy Coupe next to it. A couple cars hanging out in the back here in the 30s, a 1930 Chevy and a 1929 Studebaker Commander. So we had a 31 Chevy in the 20s and a 29 Studebaker in the 30s. I think the cars are driving around at night and parking in the wrong places. <laughs> I'll take us back to the 40s here. I think they were relocating uh, the 40s cars or something because as you can see it's just a couple of boats. That other room that you can see back there uh, has a couple of cars in there but one of them is one that looks like a Tucker. I'll, I'll take you to that room in my next video where I concentrate on the Hollywood car collection. But there, of course there's no way that that's a real Tucker because there's only like 47 of those things left and each one's probably worth a million dollars. So there's no way they'd have a real Tucker just hanging out there that there is a replica for the movie Tucker. Still pretty cool to see. Here's an old pinion boat with old Captain Jack Sparrow in the back it looks like. Our final area we'll explore today is the military pavilion. An area dedicated to military vehicles. A lot of Jeep Willys in there, some Hummers, tanks, boats, motorcycles, a lot of different vehicles in there. Pretty interesting. And I do believe most of the vehicles in here were used during some kind of conflict and or wartime. Probably not this thing though. This is what they called a plane tank. It's built on top of a 1969 Cadillac apparently. Kind of interesting though. I think it was just made for fun. I always get a bit introspective with displays like this. It's just a reminder that the life we enjoy and are thankful for was protected and fought for by somebody that I've never met. So to them and any veterans watching this, thank you for your service. May you all come home safely.
Well, that about wraps up this video here. And we've only just scratched the surface of this place. In some upcoming videos, we'll take a look at the Hollywood cars, Batmobiles, James Bond cars, cars from different countries around the world, and loads of others too. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching this video, guys. I do appreciate it, and I do appreciate you. Please give it a like if you enjoyed it, and don't forget to subscribe for more car adventures. And as always, we'll check you later. Okay, bye.